Church, what an incredible opportunity we have today to gather in homes all over our community and uh, homes across the world. That we can receive the love of God, that we can actually be in a place like this and to hear from God. I'm believing for you that, hey, I'm not talking to a camera, I'm talking to you through a camera today. That we're going to connect with God and we're going to grow together. We're going to love God. We're going to grow in faith. Come on, let's just pray for a moment because we need to receive His love in times like this. We need to receive all that God has got for us. And so if you're in your home, wherever you are right now, uh, streaming on your devices, come on, let's just pray together. Father, we thank You. We thank You that we get to be in this place. We thank You that we get to be in um, online, gathering all over the place, Lord, because nothing will stop the building of Your church, Jesus, because You are the one building it. But Lord, right now, we ask You, Father, that that um, your love would be poured out on, on us, on our homes, on our families, Lord. We declare Psalm 91 over us, Lord, that we, um, we are within your shelter. We dwell within your shadow, God. And that you will look after us and provide for us everything that we need. But God, right now, all over the place, we give you praise. We give you glory. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Amen. Uh, welcome everybody to uh, to Church Online. Uh, thanks so much for the band. You guys are rocking it, awesome. This is so fantastic to be able to uh, gather together as a church live uh, across uh, different media platforms. And uh, right now, what you might not see is that this building is completely empty right now, except for a few amazing production and worship team guys that are with us. And uh, it feels strange not being here with you. It feels strange that as we were worshiping, I'm like, there's no one to see, there's no one to, to connect with in this moment. But what I do believe is that we can connect um, via this amazing miracle of technology. And I'm just going to say thanks to you guys. You guys can uh, get off stage. That's cool. Um, and we are. Just give them a shout out on the chat comments. That's going to be fantastic. Um, and welcome. Welcome to you on YouTube. Welcome to you on Facebook Live. And welcome to our church online platform as well. So awesome to have you guys online with us. Give us a shout out in the comments. Let us know. We've got a team that will connect with you uh, via those comments. And uh, what an opportunity. I mean, we live in unprecedented times. Have I said that enough? I don't think I've said that enough. We are in unprecedented times. Uh, we have never been through this before. Last year, it was a water crisis. The year before that, it was probably something else. There have been things happening this entire decade that have been uh, just been crazy, but this is unprecedented, that a virus would stop the world in its tracks. But what we're believing for as a church is that these are unprecedented times for the gospel, that Jesus is going to get his word all over the place. There's an opportunity for faith, hope, and love to be sown into people's hearts. And even though we are not in the building together. Jesus is going to build his church. And it's unprecedented times. Now, I know that a lot of us might be um, going through difficult times. I mean, if I think about people in the events industry, people in the service industry, uh, people who who, who are being really stunted by all that is going on right now. People might be wondering where they, what's happening with their jobs, what's happening with their future, what's going to happen with their bonds, what's going what's to happen with their life. And I know that there are real fears that are happening right now. I, can, I get that. I understand that. But we're, we want to lean in with faith. We want to lean in with what God has got to say to us today. And I, I want to say that I love you. I'm so glad that you're in here. I, I believe that God is going to speak a word to you today um, from a really cool story in the Bible. And uh, we're going to get into that right now. And so uh, just bear with me quickly. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Um, we are continuing with a series called uh, Generosity. Because this year is a year that we really want to have heaven on earth. We're talking about kingdom culture within this year. And so we're talking about generosity. And Phil launched it so powerfully for us last week uh, on generous God, on the how generous, how amazing our God really is. And so we want to continue with that. But in light of the crisis that's going on around the world, we want to continue to speak into generosity. Because as a church, we don't sit down. We don't sit back. We stand up. And we need this word more than ever. Because this, there's dark times on the planet. But God has got a plan. 
And so today, I want to teach to you from an Old Testament passage uh, in 2 Kings chapter 6, verse 24 to 27. And I hope that this message will leave you with a great amount of hope, a great amount of faith, and it's going to help you practically. So we're going to be reading from, um, from chapter 6, verse 24. Sometime later, Ben-Hadad, king of Aram, mobilized his entire army and marched up and laid siege to Samaria. There was a great famine in the city. The siege lasted so long that a donkey's head sold for 80 shekels of silver and a quarter of a cab of seed pods for five shekels. As the king of Israel was passing by the wall, a woman cried to him, Help me, my lord. And the king replied, If the lord does not help you, where can I get help for you? From the threshing floor? From the wine press? Then he asked her, what is the matter? And the reality for us today is that, that we are a part of something that is way bigger than us. You see, what happened to the Israelites in Samaria was that they, were, they, they didn't follow God. They didn't follow the ways of God. And, and in fact, in the chapter just before, in the part just before, uh, they had so many people coming to try and attack them. But God delivered them supernaturally. But they continued to walk away from God. And so God allowed this king to come and lay siege against Samaria. This was something that was way bigger than them. They were involved in a famine um, that, was, that lasted so long that you had to buy a donkey's head at the price of the most expensive cut of meat you could possibly imagine. In fact, they say that it actually was uh, worth many, many months of a person's daily wage, you know, just to buy the head of a donkey. And this other thing that was happening was um, the cab of seed was um, either something that you would feed to your animals, or it would be, or they talked about something about dove's dung. I mean, come on. How crazy is that? That there were, the famine lasted for so long that people got so desperate. In fact, what we see in this nation is that the economy collapsed. People were desperate. People were isolated. In fact, people were so hungry that they turned to cannibalism. You can read it in that passage. It's, it's, it's so disturbing. People were gripped with fear. People were gripped with doubt. People were gripped with unbelief. And the reality is it was so much bigger than them. And I know that this probably makes sense to us in our generation right now, that, that we're involved with something called COVID-19, coronavirus. Personally, I'm sick of hearing about the virus. I just want to, you know, have happy days. Am I right? But we are involved in something bigger than us that has literally stopped the world. It has literally put pause on everybody's life. The, the monetary systems are falling. The economy seems to be going down. People are desperate. Now more than ever, people are isolated. People are disconnected. But you know what? God has got a plan. And what is for sure is that the confidence in the strength of men was broken in Samaria. That they, they, they couldn't look to the wine press. They couldn't look to the threshing floor because there was nothing there to help them. There was nothing there to provide for them. We might be looking to the government, we might be looking to banks, we might be looking to our stocks, we might be looking to so many things. But now's an opportunity where our confidence is definitely being broken in, in the worldly systems that we live in. But it's time to look to the Lord because He has a plan and a purpose. In fact, Paul writes in Romans 8.28, And we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love Him, who have been called according to His purpose. You know, this might be bigger than us. We might be living in, a, in a, um, a, a, a global pandemic that is bigger than us. But I want to give you confidence today that though it's bigger than us, it's bigger than our government, it's bigger than our health care, it's not bigger than God because God is bigger than this. I want to give you hope and courage in that today. And what we learn from the story in Samaria is that let's not have so much confidence in the things of this world. Yes, we are in the world, but we're not... We don't have to partake of it. We don't have to put our hope, our trust. We don't have to put all our security in the things of this world. We put our security in the God of heaven, the living God who sits on the throne of heaven, who is in command of all things. We do not have an itty bitty small God who's worried about what's going on right now. We have a good father in heaven who sits over all things and is powerful 
in Jesus' name and will turn this around for the good of those who love him and are called according to his purpose. That was the first part. The second part is this, is that we need discerning ears. We need discerning ears. So to skip down to uh, 2 Kings chapter 6, verse 33, um, what we see going on here is that uh, the, the king starts freaking out. He starts freaking out. He starts saying, oh no, okay, the prophet, it's the prophet's fault. It's God's fault, and I'm going to take the head off the prophet. Because kind of what, what Elisha had said to him is, King, this army is coming against us, but don't go out and attack them and don't surrender to them because you are going to see God's deliverance like you did before. And so they waited, they waited, they waited, and it got so desperate. And eventually what happens is the king loses all hope and he sends a messenger to Elisha's house to, to take his head off his shoulders. And the king realizes what he's done and he runs after his messenger. But we, we see here in verse 33, while he was still running to them, the messenger came, uh, talking to them, the messenger came down to him. The king said, this disaster is from the Lord. Why should I wait for the Lord any longer? You see how hopeless he got. See how disconnected he got. He started to blame God for the situation. But Elisha replied, and if, and if you're taking notes or if you've got your Bible out, you want to highlight this next verse. Hear the word of the Lord. Hear the word of the Lord of the Lord. And now he begins to prophesy. This is what the Lord says. About this time tomorrow, a sayer of the finest flour will sell for a shekel and two sayers of barley for a shekel at the gate of Samaria. Now, you've got to understand that in a time of economic crisis, when they were willing to eat donkey's head and, and pay the world for it, what, is, what he's prophesying tomorrow is amazing. He's prophesying that the economic collapse will be over. Yes, these food prices were still expensive for what they were buying, but it was significantly reduced so that everybody could eat and everybody could be full. And then an officer on whose arm the king was leaning said to the man of God, Look, <laughs> listen, Elisha, <laughs> I get it. You're the prophet, right? But he says, even if the Lord should open the floodgates of the heavens, could this happen? You know, a lot of the time when we hear the word of the Lord, we go, oh, I mean, is that really possible? Is, could that really happen? The truth is, whatever we feel about God's word doesn't make it less true. It is still true. It is still active. It is still powerful. And it says, he goes, Elisha says to him, you will see it with your own eyes, but you will not eat any of it. You see, we need discerning ears. You know, the king was talking about, why, why, would, why should I wait for God any longer? Does God really care? Is there anything that God can do about it? And you and I, we might be facing crisis of faith in the midst of this pandemic and go, what is God's plan? Can God do anything about it? What is God's, does he even love us? Doesn't he see what's going on out there? Can God really, why bother praying? Can God really do something about it? Yes, he can. And God is working all things to the good. And the officer, his response to Elisha's word was simply his faith and his hope were all gone. It was just, he had no faith to believe in the word of God. He had no faith to, to activate his faith, to see that God is going to provide a way where there is no way, a miracle, something impossible was about to happen, but he couldn't see it. He was so preoccupied by his fears that he couldn't see the opportunity that God wanted to bring. And that's the thing, why we have to hear the word of the Lord, because the word of the Lord breaks the bondage of fear in our life and helps us to see the truth of what the Lord is wanting to do. And so today, hear the word of the Lord, because in every crisis, there's an opportunity. Yes, like I said, we live in an unprecedented time. But in this time, there is so much hope for the gospel that it's not contained to any one building, but churches all around the world are getting the word of God out there. They're spreading the good news of Jesus Christ, bringing hope, love, and healing into people's hearts and pointing people to someone that's bigger than the church, someone bigger than the pandemic. They're pointing people to the living God. That is what the power of the word of God does. The word of the Lord is prophetic. It declares things that haven't yet come that will come to pass. 
because his word is true and faithful. I love it how the scripture says that the word of God is in fact a two-edged sword. I love that because every time that I hear the word of the Lord and I declare the word of the Lord, it's got two edges to it. One, it builds our faith and two, it defeats the devil. You need the Lord to move in your life. So let's get active in the word of the Lord. Let's hear the word of the Lord so that we can give the word of the Lord because we can't give what we're not full of. We can't give what we're not full of. So again, full of the word of God. It brings hope. It brings faith. But you see, there's another word in the world, the word of the world. And, and that's exactly what the officer brings. Can God do this? Is this even possible? The prevailing message of our culture is a negative one. The prevailing message of our culture is one of unbelief. It's one of fear. It's one of self-promoting. It's one that scoffs at God's word. You know what the world and what the media want to do is they want to spread as much fear and panic as what they can because it means more viewerships. It means people will respond. The media is perfectly poised to spread a message that would cause fear. And we would say, no, we just want to stay updated. I have no problem with staying up with, updated with what's going on around the world. I think it's wise. I think it's good. But what are we, what are we letting dominate our heart? What, what is the message that's being dominated in our ears and in our souls? Is it the message of the world? It's telling us to run and hide. Or is it the message of God, the word of the Lord that is speaking faith that this too shall pass? And in fact, his kingdom will continue to grow and expand, that he will protect you here, that he will deliver you and deliver me. Whose word are we allowing to dominate our hearts? We can't give what we're not full of. If we are full of media, bad news, that's all we can give to people. But when we are full on the word of the Lord, which is a message of hope, faith, and love, a way back to God, a way to live, we can give people the hope that's on the inside of our souls. I love it in Romans 10, chapter 17. Uh, Romans chapter 10, verse 17. Paul says, So then faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. So we must be positioned as a people of God, to hear the word of God. Let the word of God come into our lives. Let, let us spend time in God's word, hearing God's word. In fact, in Psalm 119 verse 105, the writer of the Psalm says, Your word is a lamp for my feet, a light on my path. That's exactly what we need in these days. What we need is we need the, the faith and the courage and the power of God through his word to penetrate our minds and our souls. And what we will see is we'll have faith, but we will also know how to navigate dark times because the light of God's word shines away on our path. Then we can help other people to find truth in that way. So what are we saying? What's the point of all of this? Well, can I put a challenge out to you? Yeah, you sitting on your couch right now. Or maybe you at your watch party. We've got a couple of watch parties. Shout out. If, it's by the way, if uh, you are with your watch party right now, could you take a photo, post it to Facebook? We'd love to celebrate with you. And all the, the testimonies are going to come through watch parties. But can I put a challenge out there to each and every one who calls View Church Sunningdale home? Before we listen to the news in the morning, let's listen to the Word of God. Before we listen to what Facebook is saying, what Instagram, what Twitter is saying, what CNN is saying, what BBC is saying, what Sky News is saying, what Al Jazeera is saying, whatever news platform is out there, before we listen to that, let us listen to the word of the Lord. Listen to the preaching of God's word. That's why it's so important for you to be connected to church online. I love it that our church gets to participate in this. I, I love it that our church has been uniquely positioned for a couple of months now to put our church online. And I'm so grateful for the generosity of the people within our church. And if, if you're tuning in from another church, you're so welcome here. We're glad that you're here. But I want to encourage you, go and listen and go be a part of what your church is doing online. Because this is not a time to be looking for a church buffet online situation. This is an opportunity for you to connect with the family of God that you've been planted into to make a difference. You're welcome here, but come on, go and build church online within your church. Give like never before, amen? I just heard loads of amens coming out there, just high fives on, on the chat rooms. 
but listen to the preaching of God's word. Open your scripture. Don't try and read everything. Just read a paragraph of scripture. If you don't know where to start, why don't you start in the book of Matthew? There's a contents page at the beginning of your Bible or download the YouVersion Bible app from your app store and go to Matthew and just read pass, pa, uh, paragraph and then do this simple exercise. Soap. Read scripture. Observe what it says. Look for what you need to apply and then pray into that. And I believe that as you start each and every day like that, you're going to see God fill you with faith, fill you with courage, fill you with hope, and that you can bring that to other people in these times. What we see next happening in the story is that it kind of moves from inside the city to outside the city. It moves strangely to four lepers that are sitting at the city gate. Now, what would happen with lepers is that they weren't allowed to be integrated into healthy society because they had all sorts of skin diseases. Does that sound familiar? You, 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 they had to self-isolate within their own community. And it got so bad that if you had leprosy, you had to walk around with a coat on saying, I'm unclean, I'm unclean, so that nobody would accidentally bump into you, that they wouldn't accidentally cough onto somebody. So they were isolated, but God was going to use them to do something significant. In fact, it goes on to say how, how they had no place else to go. They were thinking, the four lepers, okay, we're dying of starvation. If we go into the city, we'll die. If we stay here, we'll die. If we go to the Arameans that are camped around the city of Samaria right now, we will die. But we may just live if they have mercy on us. So they realized there was no place to go but forward. No point going backwards. No point staying where you are. It's just moving forward with courage and faith in their hearts. But God used those lepers and the army was actually driven away. A miracle happens. As they begin walking to the enemy camp, the enemy, the Arameans hear like chariots coming and they think, oh no, the, 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 um, the king of Israel, has King Jehoram, has now hired the Hittite army and the Egyptian army to come against us. And you know what they do? They fled in such a panic. They left all their treasures, all their possessions, all their food, all their tents. They left everything. They dropped everything and ran. How amazing is that? That God was delivering them even in their final hour. The reality is there is an enemy. So I'm talking about hearing the word of the Lord, but I'm not saying that there's no enemy. I'm not saying that there is no virus. I'm not saying that there is no pandemic. I'm not saying that there isn't a reason to be cautious or exercise good wisdom. There is an enemy. There is a virus. There is something that is happening globally right now. So exercise good hygiene. You know, use the sanitizers. Um, you know, do all of that stuff. Check on our website. We've got all the information there that you're going to need for that. Go check it out. Get that information. Exercise good hygiene. Um, have social uh, distancing, but not social, just like physical distancing. If you can, stay in your home um, and work from home. Those are wise things to do. If you're sick or if you're traveled, rather stay at home. But do not practice spiritual distancing. Now is not a time to be disconnected from the body of Christ. Now more than ever, we need each other. I need you. You need me. Let's do this together. And the way that you can do that is go connect online. Go to watch parties. That's an incredible way of us to get connect, connected together in smaller groups of people so that we can still experience God's word together. Or connect to a life group. Where a life group, maybe they'll meet in smaller groups than normal. Or they'll even connect via a virtual online group. In fact, my life group this week, we're going to be connecting via a video conferencing tool. I'm so pumped. I've practiced with my staff already. It's going to be awesome. I'm looking forward to it. Why? So we can share our stories. We can come around God's word and we can pray for one another. Strengthen one another. Love one another. Now is an opportunity for us. All our confidence has been in banking, economies, and it's been in our self-reliance, it's been in our finances, it's been in our health care, it's been in stocks, the stock market has gone down, people are freaking out, and our confidence in those things have been broken because something bigger than those things is now on the planet. But I want to tell you, church, 
Let's not lose sight of the fact that there is someone bigger than what's happening on the planet right now. He's in command. He's in control. God has not forgotten us. He's not abandoned us. In fact, God did not slip off the throne and go, what is happening? Corona virus is all around. What is going on? I'm totally freaked out by this. God never had that moment. God knew it. God planned for it. He prepared it. And what God, though God didn't cause it, he uses it for the good of those who love him and are called according to his purpose. Let's remember that he is the one who makes a way when there is no way. He is the Alpha and the Omega. He is the provider. He is the sustainer. He is the Almighty. He is our healer. He is good. He is sovereign. He is the Ancients of Days. He is our Creator. And God is able to do immeasurably more in this season. Let's not forget that. My last point today is this, that we need generous spirits. We need generous spirits. 2 Kings chapter 7, verse 8 to 9. What happens is, as these lepers get to the Aramean camp, they walk around, they go, where did everybody go? They're like, it's like being in church right now. Where did everybody go? They went online, that's what they happened. No, they, they, they ran away and the lepers walked in and they just collected so much bounty, so much treasure. It even says that they even went as far as to hide some of it. So God made a way. But let's just read in verse 8, eight and 9. The men who had leprosy reached the edge of the camp, entered one of the tents, and ate and drank. And they took silver, gold, and clothes and went off and hid them. They returned and entered another tent and took some things from it and hid them also. Then they said to each other, what we're doing is not right. This is a day of good news and we are keeping it to ourselves. If we wait until daylight, punishment will overtake us. Let's go at once and report this to the palace, to the royal palace. These lepers were abundantly blessed. So much wealth that they even hid some of it. But they found themselves with so much that they needed to spread the good news. You see, just behind them, where they had come from, was an entire city that was on the edge of their existence. They were desperate, isolated, hungry. They were, they were so desperate for, what, for, for, for some food. And what they found was a treasure that was so valuable that it would be wrong if they didn't share it. You and I, church, we, we have a treasure that is so unbelievable that it would be wrong if we didn't share it with people. People are isolated, desperate. That people are needing some faith. They're needing some hope. They're needing the Word of God. And we have that. We have a treasure that's undeniable that we need to share with other people out there. Now is not a time for us to lean in and to look after ourselves, but now is an opportunity to realize that we have a great treasure and and it's an opportunity for them to know that we have so much so we can give so much. We have so much so we can give so much. I'm not talking about being unwise. I'm just saying realize what we have and let us use what we have to make a difference because there is an entire city out there that needs this, that is desperate for something, desperate for hope, desperate for the truth. And we have it. Church, now is not a season for us to sit on it. You and I, we're looked after. Be wise, but we're looked after. Let's look after other people. In fact, in Proverbs 11, verse 24 to 25, the writer of Proverbs says, One person gives freely, yet gains even more. Another withholds unduly and comes to poverty. A generous person will prosper. Whoever refreshes others will be refreshed. See, what it's saying is that if we are generous in this season, our world will become bigger. We, we have more friends. We have more connections. But if we are stingy and we hold on to what we have, the Bible says even what we have will disappear and our lives become smaller. Generosity is a spirit that we carry. It's a kingdom culture. It's knowing that we have found so much so we can give so much. 
It's knowing that we found the treasure of the kingdom of God through Jesus Christ. We found the hope of the world. We found the light of the world. We have found the the King of kings and the Lord of lords. We have found the Savior of the world. Jesus is the hope of the world, and we want to spread that message through all the world because people need it. Our hope is anchored in Jesus. Our hope is not anchored in the economy. It's in Jesus who is our provider. Our hope is not anchored into the medical system, although that's great, and we're praying for medical professionals on the front line, believing God with you to get on top of this virus. But our hope is not in that. Our hope is not in the systems and the structures of government. Our hope is in a kingdom that is greater than the earth, the greater than the kingdom on the face of the earth. It's the kingdom of God, and it's Jesus Christ who sits on the throne of heaven, who is coming again. He brings life to people. He brings life to us, and our hope is anchored in Him. I'm going to close off the message with this last scripture in 1 John chapter 3, verse 16 to 18. John writes this, This is how we know what love is. Jesus Christ laid down His life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers and sisters. If anyone has material possessions and sees a brother or sister in need but has no pity on them, how can the love of God be in them? Dear children, let us not love with words or speech, but with actions and in truth. How do we practically apply this? Churches, let's, let's be generous. Let's be generous to people around us. Let's not hold on to everything that we have. You might be self-isolating right now. You, you, you might be in, a, in your home, but you're caged in a prison of fear. God's got your back. He's bigger than that. He's bigger than the virus. He's bigger than what's going on in the world right now. He's bigger than a collapsing economy. God is big and powerful and amazing, and He loves you. So let's be generous to other people. How how can we be generous? Very practically. Why don't we just text people that we know they might be isolated? Maybe there's some elderly people. You could even go do shopping for them. Maybe there's a way that we can look to people around us and say, hey, can we send someone a scripture? Could Could we share this good news? Could we invite people to church online? What about something so practical as saying, hey, I'm committed to the giving of the local church that we can continue to get ministry out there. We can do that. But you know, we're, we're busy investigating something right now where we want to put a relief fund together for people who are going to be affected by COVID-19. And honestly, right now, in many areas in our city, people don't even have hand sanitizer. They don't even have soap. They can't social distance. They can't log in online. And what we want to do is we want to be the hands and feet of Jesus and to bring simple things like soap and hand sanitizer and cleaning products and education to them so that they also have some hope and we can preach the gospel to them. And you're going to hear more about that on social media. But church, please, now is not a time for us to shrink back in fear. Now is not a time for us to be so concerned over everything that we have or we don't have. Now is the time to walk in the grace and the confidence of God Almighty. We don't have to walk prideful, but you can walk with hope and confidence that other people are going to say, why are you so relaxed? Why are you so chilled out? Why aren't you panicking like everybody else? And you can say, because my hope and my faith is in Jesus. It always has been and it always will be. Or maybe you're here today for the very first time and you don't have that hope. Well, I want you to leave with hope today. Generosity always goes beyond us. Jesus went beyond himself for us. People found hope and new life in him. And God is going to see us through these days. But more than just seeing us through these days, he's going to use us in these days to make a difference for the kingdom of God and people's lives all over the world encourage you that when your resources are low and your doubts are strong, remember this, that God can open up the windows of heaven. He's not left us nor forsaken us. He is a good God, a powerful God. 
And I just want to take a moment, church, to pray for us. To actually just get that, that word on the inside of us. That great song, I think it's from Bethel Church, that I am no longer a slave to fear. What a powerful declaration. And so where you are right now, let's pray. And then I want to share something with those who don't know Jesus just yet. So Lord, we commit this to you, Lord, this word to you. We thank you, Lord, that though the situation is bigger than us, you are bigger than this. And you're going to use this for your glory. Father, we also thank you that your word is like a double-edged sword. It's powerful. It brings hope. It brings faith into our life. So, Father, we want, to, we want to spend time in your word each and every day. And, Lord, I thank you that you're going to guide people. And, Father, in this season that we as a church would stand up and rise to who you've made us, God, that we would serve boldly, serve courageously, and be more generous than we've ever been before. Because, Lord, the world is watching, and we want to magnify God in this season. Amen. I just want to share something with you. And you guys say, wow, Swen, that, that, that's great. I mean, that's, that's encouraging and that's hopeful. But I'm not really sure I can believe all of that. And I, I get it. I get your skepticism. I, I understand that you've grown up in a world of hurt and fear and pain and things have happened. And, and how do we make sense of all of this? How do we make sense of a, of a story of, that's thousands of years old? How can it still be true today? Well, I want to leave you with this confidence that the Bible, the scriptures that we have, are the most reliable historical documents of the ancient world. We have confidence to know that what happened actually happened. In fact, when it reports about Jesus, we know that there were secular philosophers that were writing about Jesus and writing about his death. In fact, the Roman historians were even writing about the fact that Jesus had this following and he died. But the truth that we hold on to is that God came to earth in the form of Jesus Christ so that he would die on the cross for our sins, that we may be forgiven, that his blood, his perfect sinless blood was poured out on the cross to cleanse us of our sin because he was motivated by love for you and love for me that he shed his blood to wash us clean, to give us a way to heaven. And you know that there were over 500 eyewitnesses to his resurrection? We're not talking about some itty-bitty little... There is evidence that Jesus lived, he died, and he rose again, and the church took off, and it's continued to grow ever since. Because we're not building on a great religious philosophy. We are building on a revelation that Jesus Christ is Lord, and he wants to spend eternity with you to forgive you and to forgive me of our sins and right now i want to invite you into a relationship with him because the bible says that if we believe in our heart and confess with our tongues that jesus is lord we will be saved it requires a repentance of turning away from the way i've been living to now living towards jesus not perfection just a change of direction and to put your faith in him to believe in the Son of God and to receive Him into your life this morning. So I'm going to pray for you all over the place. And if this is the prayer that you want to say, you can say this under your breath because it still is true and still is powerful. So let's all pray together. Heavenly Father, for all my friends online that want to put their faith in you, I ask that they would repeat after me. Dear God, Thank you for Jesus. I'm so sorry for my sin, God. I'm so sorry for running my own way, putting my trust in things other than you. But right now, God, I, I call out to you. I believe that Jesus is the Son of God. I activate the little faith that you've given me, and I put my hope in him. And I invite Jesus to live in my heart and to forgive me of my sins that I may follow you all the days of my life as a Christian. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Amen. And no church that we are so proud of you. This is the best decision you can make in life, and it's the start of a great journey.
If you made a decision for Christ today, if you're on our church online platform, a little bar is going to come up just below me right now. And you can click on that and say, yep, that's me. Digitally, I'm putting my hand up. And what we want to do is we want to do our very best to get information to you that will help you to take your next steps. Um, if you're on Facebook Live right now or on YouTube Live, come on, just put it in the comments. Say, that's me. Put your hand up in the comment section so that we can believe God with you. And we're going to share a link on our Facebook page um, for a, a document that you can download about your next steps in how to follow Jesus. What an incredible day. What an incredible, incredible opportunity that we have to be the church. And right now, if you have a prayer request or a praise report, please let us know in the comment section. But if you're on the church online platform, there's a tab just to the side of me. It's either this side or this side. And you can just click on there. There's a contact card. Put in your details there um, and type in what you need to type in and we will get back to you. If you have a prayer request in church online at the bottom, there's a prayer request button. Please use that. If you're on Facebook or YouTube, just put in the comments. We will be praying with you and we'll be praying for you, believing God for you in these days. And we're going to end off the service right now with a bit of a praise song so we can, or a bit of a worship song, I'm not sure. A praise song, here we go, uh, so we can celebrate and we can walk out of church online today with faith in our hearts and praise on our lips in Jesus' mighty name. And Encar encourage you to stay connected to our online platforms so that we can continue to get the message to you about um, up and coming developments. God bless you and have an incredible week. Amen.